length of time. It could be six months, it could be six years, it could be ten years, it could be a matter of days or minutes. God is just silent. You have been praying for God to bless you with your own family. It's not happening. You have been praying to God to bless you with a husband. It hasn't come yet. You have been praying to God to please bless you with your own child or children. It none has come yet. You have been praying to God for a particular type of job. God just kept you quiet. You have been praying for God to bless you and abundantly he kept you quiet. He did not keep quiet. He wasn't silenced because he didn't want to give it to you. And we saw that one of the reasons God could be silenced among three reasons. One, God is trying to build you into his required vessel. Amen. God is trying to shape you to what he wants you to be. God is trying to make you to where um, the vessel he really wants you to be. That's reason number one. We saw Joseph. His brothers hated him because God spoke to Joseph only once and never spoke to Joseph again until Joseph was tossed into prison in Egypt. And God did not, remember I said last week, God will not tell you what you're going to go through because if he come and tell you, when he break that silence and tell you, you will pull back and then you will lose your blessings. You will not be willing to withstand it. God will remain silent, not for a good reason, for a good reason. For your own good. He wants to build you. Joseph was, saw a dream. And his brothers hated him. He dreamt another one. In Genesis 37. And the brothers, the Bible said the brothers even hated him the more. So what it means. When God is, when God shows you a revelation. Or when you are begging for something. He, God will not speak to you. Or through prophet or through dreams or anything. He will keep you quiet. Why God kept Joseph quiet like he has kept quiet for a lot of your prayer requests. For a lot of the things you've been begging God. He kept quiet for him to build you to the vessel you need to be for him. Now, the brothers of Joseph toss him into those pits. Just as circumstances of life will toss you into a pit. Now, the brother said, let's not kill him. Let's sell him off to these merchants coming over in his direction. Just as circumstances of life or someone you know will betray you, his brothers betrayed him. Just as your best friend will betray you, his brothers betrayed him. Just as someone you love so much will betray you, just as his brothers betrayed him and sold him off. Just as your emotions, your love, your feelings will be sold out. And then, Joseph now got to Egypt in Pontifar's house. Just say, oh, wow, the master said everything, you're under control except my wife. The devil not heard him, oh, except his wife. Then the devil went into his wife. Joseph was, God did not speak to Joseph at all. Because Joseph was not sure what God was doing. God, only, God does not talk much. God will not be speaking to you every day, no. He's not a talkative father. He doesn't talk like you and I who have a basket mouth. God will just say one word, and before you hear him again, it's months and weeks. He will tell you something and will never speak a word again. And you'll be waiting. A lot of time we'll wait and then give up. Now, to summarize the first portion of it, Joseph got, you know, tempted by Pontiphas' wife. Before Joseph knew what was happening, he's in jail. But he didn't know God was taking him through these steps to build him into the vessel to save lives. To save generations of life. God knew famine was coming. To save, to preserve life. The Bible said, Jesus said, God did this to preserve life. Guess what? When God is about to speak to you, like he did to Joseph in the, in, in, in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh had his dream, Joseph did not know he was going to be used to be next in command to, each, the, 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 to, to Pharaoh. Joseph didn't know. Finally, we all read that the reason God kept Joseph silent from when he was in, 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 in his father's land to Egypt was to, number one reason, to build, mold him into the vessel to preserve lives. 
And that one day, when God finally spoke through Pharaoh's dream to Joseph, that one day God exalted his name. When God is ready to speak to you, don't have regret when, he is, when God was silent over your issues. Don't regret the things you've missed the last three years, the last four years, the last five. Don't have regrets. What have I done to myself? No, God did that for a reason because the day God will come to speak to you again, he will wear you clothes of victory, clothes of prosperity, clothes of good health, clothes of peace in your life. God will crown you like he crowned Joseph. Now, Joseph is not the vessel to save his entire generation. He is not the vessel. Jesus Christ was the vessel to save humanity. 30 years of Jesus' ministry, God did not come and speak to him except when he was conceived by his parents through the Holy Spirit. God did not come and say, Jesus, he, God only made him understand he's going to die and he saw it in the revelation. And he was praying according to Luke 22. This, the Bible said the sweat that was coming out of Jesus Christ's body was like blood. Why God kept silent? He knew if you go and speak to Jesus Christ, Jesus might convince him. And one mistake you will do, and we will see that today, when you push and push and make God change his mind, you are bound to regret it. Do you believe that God can change his mind? And when God changes his mind from his season of silence over your circumstance, you are bound to feel pain. You are bound to feel hate. You are bound to feel pain in your soul. Just allow God to flow with you. Jesus was the vessel that was used to save us. Jesus was the vessel that was used to shed his blood because God prepared him for the sole purpose. If you read from all the time when Jesus was born to when he died for you and I, God was silent. Even Jesus now asked God, why have you forsaken me? That means God didn't say a word. Because if God has said something, the purpose why Jesus was created would not be fulfilled. So there are times in your life, in your predicament, in your circumstance, in your situation, in your hardship, in your time of joy, in your time of prayers, in your time of supplication, God reserved the, uh, the right to be silent. And when he is silent, stay put and wait for his miracle. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The second reason why God could be silent to your issue, which I introduced a little bit, is God is building the right people along the way for you. God will be silent over your issue because he knows that, okay, I've already blessed Matthew with this gift. So I'm waiting to walk Pastor Jude so that he will meet Matthew for Matthew to not give that gift. Oh, I'm silent over your blindness, Jude Ayosi. I'm silent over this, your condition because I want you to go to America where I want to bless you with souls in this ministry that will be a blessing unto you. When I lost my sight, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I fasted and fasted and fasted. The Lord didn't even say a word to me. I asked God, I said, Lord, how can I go blind at 20, 21 years old? I prayed. Ministers that were fasting upon me, they prayed. They called upon God and they never heard nothing. I didn't know God was building me Second reason, so that he was silent and building people like all of you in my life so that I can meet with you. If he had taken or given me my sight, my wife and I were talking about it yesterday. My children get so concerned when they see things that other fathers are doing for their kids, put them in the car, take them to games. My boy said the other day, Daddy, I just wish you could see. You could just take was a right to, 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 the, to games, to the store. We have daddy and son's time. I said, son, and their mother turned around and said, son, maybe if God didn't take your father's side, he may not be alive to be daddy to you today. And that makes
makes a lot of sense because God was silent those years. Now, one more example. God was silent in your life to build people that he's going to use to explore his miracle in your life. To meet people he's going to use to bring peace to your heart. To do the things you least expect. Now, someone read for me Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. So that you will see why John the Baptist, I mean, uh, um, Zachariah and Elizabeth, God was silent over there. They were praying. They were pleading, God, give us a child. Like some of you must have been praying for a particular job. You've been praying for spouse or something for your children. Keep praying. Don't give up. But it does not mean that God will come and speak to you about it. When a, 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 a minister said to you, oh, you have been, your prayer has been answered. We look forward that that thing must happen today. No! It may happen in 10 years. Zachariah, the Bible said Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were so righteous. But God kept silent over their barrenness. Luke 1, read from verse 8. I'll tell you when to stop. If loud and clear, please. Luke 1. So that you will see that God was silent over Zachariah, priest Zachariah. That was during the time of Herod. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. Now, look at when the angel came to speak to Zachariah. Mm -hmm. And when Zachariah? Zachariah. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. He was troubled and fear fell upon him because he saw an angel. Uh -huh. But the angel said to him, Do uh -huh. not be afraid, Zachariah, uh -huh. for your prayer is heard. You see, for your prayer is what? Heard. Elizabeth will bear you a child. Uh huh. And you shall call his name John. Uh huh. And you will have joy and gladness. See, God now says you have joy and gladness. Now, the verses before that, you will see what the Bible said Zachariah and Elizabeth lived a righteous life before God. It's in there. Yes, verse 6. Yes, read it. And they were both righteous before God. Isn't there were both, husband and wife both? Tell me a couple that is righteous before God today. What? Name them. None. These couple were righteous, but yet God kept silent over their issue of barrenness. Uh -huh. Keep reading. That's it. Walking in the commandments they were walking. of the Lord blameless. Blameless. Walking in the law. So sometimes in our sin, we are, we are questioning God. Why God? I, I go to church every so often. Oh God, I go to church. Going to church is not good enough. But Zachariah and Elizabeth were righteous, walking in the ordinance of God, but God kept silent over their barrenness. Why? He wanted to fulfill a purpose in their, in their life by blessing them and making the world know. See, when God's hand is in an event, you don't need any interpreter to know the hand of God is in there. Shout hallelujah. Uh huh. See, the Bible said they were both well advanced in years. So they were old. Now, skip to, uh, go skip to where you were reading before. So I just want you to see the story, how God kept silent over their issue. So that <clears throat> when John will be conceived, it will rhyme appropriately with the birth of Jesus Christ. Like the series we learned from Pastor Shepard a few weeks ago where he, he, he gave good information about certain things about John the Baptist. Jesus, God knew if he had blessed Zachariah and Elizabeth many years before Jesus Christ's conception, 
John the Baptist will not be patient enough, or maybe probably will not be willing to wait to baptize Jesus or to walk alongside with Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. So God kept silent so that John would come the right time, so that Jesus Christ will also come the right time. Now let's see how God now revealed. Go to verse 30, um, 39 of that same verse. So that I want you to understand. My meeting with you, Elohemi, is not an accident. Hallelujah. My meeting with you, Apostle Shepherd, is not an accident. Hallelujah. My meeting with you, well, Mother Peace, is not a what? An accident. Amen. God, don't look at it. Though. God was silent over some of your circumstances in the past for us to meet and join forces to do his will. Amen. Shout hallelujah. For his name to be glorified. For his name to be exalted. Now read verse 39 to 41, 42. I want you to see why God was silent over Elizabeth's barrenness. And why God didn't say much. Uh huh. Then she spoke out a loud voice and said, Blessed are, the, blessed are you among women. Remember, the Bible said the Holy Spirit took control. It said, Blessed are you among women. Look at the language here. Uh huh. The mother of my Lord. Don't you see the Holy Spirit communicating to Elizabeth? How did she know? The mother, Mary did not tell her, oh, I'm pregnant. But there was connection between Jesus and who? John. God kept silent over her barrenness, did not want to fulfill the, the, the blessing of fertility. He was waiting at the right time. God kept quiet over the fact that certain things have not come your way. God is waiting at the right time. God kept silent over the ill health that has plagued your body for many years. He's waiting at the right what? Time. All you need to do, give God a chance. Uh-huh. So, go ahead. believe that, that. Thank you very much. So I want you to understand. The second reason, see, God was silent over Elizabeth and Zachariah's situation or circumstance because he was aligning the right people in, their, in Jesus Christ's path. Amen. He was. Is your, is, is, is your family going through an issue right now? And you have been praying for it? And you've been praying about it? Or you've been praying over it? And it seemed like Man, I'm not getting headway. God, when will you come and answer me? God, just stay tuned and allow God to be silent for a good reason. Allow him. God is not silent for nothing. He will just keep quiet for a reason. One, to build you into the vessel you need to be. Or two, to prepare for you and the things that you need to fulfill his will. Shout hallelujah. He is preparing people in your path, in your life, for you to be able to fulfill his will. That's why he kept you silent. That's why you are going through what you're going through. It seems like he's not answering. You go to church. I, I've seen a lot of people who will say, I'm not going to church anymore because I've been asking for this blessing. And we do that a lot when that blessing is almost there. We, do, we stop praying when that blessing is almost granted. We give up when that blessing is already been handed to you. And you quickly make a wrong decision and move on with your life. I said, ah, God doesn't answer prayer in that ministry anymore. And then you wonder. You go back to square one again. And square one becomes very treacherous, very painful, very hurtful. You go back to square one because 
You were, you were just tired of waiting for the season. You were tired of not learning the season of silence of God. God is just like, you know what, I'm not going to speak to you. Because if I give you this thing you're asking me, it will lead you to trouble you cannot get yourself out of. And I will give you two troubles. A child of God could not wait anymore and is still bothering and haunting you and I till date. Child, hallelujah. The third reason God could be silent over your revelation or over your predicament, or over your circumstance, the third reason is God is fighting on for sin battles. They are battling your path. God needs to go and clear them off for you. He will say, okay, okay, you beg, oh, you're asking for this job, right? Okay, I will give you the job, but not today. If I give you the job, some psychopath is going to take a gun and come there and slaughter people in three months' time. So I'm going to wait. Keep praying, my daughter. Angel Gabriel, Michael, go and start fighting because the devil has seen that my daughter's job that has been blessed unto her or this thing has been given unto her. So we're not giving her the blessing to come to fulfillment yet. Go and fight those evil forces that are waiting to slaughter her life or his life. God will send his angels out. And here you are praying and begging. And then one month, two months, three months, one year. Two years. You are used to pray. Then you wonder why haven't this prayer been? But I thought I went to church last week and put prayer request. And my prayer request has not been answered yet. I thought Pastor said that God said he has answered my prayers. I thought the priest said my prayers has been answered. Why haven't my prayers been answered? I thought I prayed hard enough. But Pastor said to fast. What's going on? I thought Pastor had a oh that person had a dream that the, the prayer has been answered. Oh Pastor said, oh the sister said that God told her that prayer is gone through. You know why? God is fighting battle that He knows if you dare fight yourself, it will destroy you. If you try to fight those battles yourself, it will literally destroy you. So God will just say, I'm not giving you this job. I'm not giving you this car because you're going to have a wreck in six months. Oh, I'm going to grant this car for the next three weeks so that you do not drive it. Ah, you don't know what's happening. Oh, man, I went late for this job interview. Oh, man, God is silent for a reason. He is fighting a battle your eyes cannot see. When Jesus was conceived, King Herod heard that a king has been born. If you remember the story, he authorized soldiers, go and kill every male. Before then, Gabriel came again because Gabriel is a messenger that comes to tell you your prayer is answered. Flee away or God said to come and tell you the response to your prayers. And Gabriel showed up again and said, the God of Israel said, carry this child and run away. Matthew 2 verse 20. Read it for me. See, God kept quiet. It is not hard for the Lord to say, okay, Herod, King Herod, sleep and die, and he will die. All your soldiers sleep and die. But God wants to make a name for himself through that circumstance in your life. Sometimes a man of God may tell you that God said to do this, you will question it and say, oh, if it is God who said I should do this, why would God tell me not to? No, 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 God don't operate like that. Peace in Yahshua's name. Amen. Shout hallelujah! No, 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 nobody shout it. Let's try it again. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is better. You see, when God is fighting a battle for your sake, there are things you've been asking him. Whatever that is, family of your own, children of your own, a good job, he will keep you quiet for a reason. He is fighting battle because the devil is very crafty. The devil is very what? Crafty. And he will wait for you there. Now read Matthew. You see what happened. What Jesus Christ, I mean, uh, uh, Joseph and Mary was told. Matthew 2.20. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, uh -huh. saying, Arise, go to the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought a young child's life are dead. You see, the angel said, Rise now. If you read the verses before, that the angel said, Roll away. Now that the angel said, Come back. Now that those who saw the child's life are what? Dead. dead. That is how everything, every spirit that sought your, you and your family's life will be put to death in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Everything.
anything that tries to hinder your blessing will be put to death in Jesus' name. Because God is fighting. He said, Arise, he said, take you now, go back. Those who sought the life of this child, they are now dead. They are dead. That's how God works. He did not come and tell them. The angel said, Okay, carry this child and flee. Carry this child and flee. Just as God will tell you. Do A, B, C, D, E. I'll tell you, when my wife was conceived with my, my twin children, the Spirit of God appeared and came to me and said, you see this pregnancy? He identified key individuals that should be told and said, no one should know until a certain period of time. And I kept it to the T. said, hallelujah. Some people will say, oh, I thought you said you serve a living God. God is a, he is a victorious God. I will not be afraid of my enemy. When God said, don't leak out a secret of yours, it does not mean that God cannot fight the battle for you. It means God wants to keep you even safer. Are you getting my point? When we were pregnant of my twin boys, the Lord only told me to speak to two individuals. Even one family member, they were not told until they saw my wife with big tummy. Like, oh, wow. So you've been, and then they found out that the Lord now said, nobody must know. Two boys are in her womb. And we kept that. Everybody found out when Elijah and Elisha showed up. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I didn't know why God gave that instructions. There were some people who got mad at me that me and my wife were not letting them know that twists were on their way. No, 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 people, a lot of people got mad because we didn't tell them it was two boys. It's not my fault. God said that is how he won. So that he can fight those battles. Sometimes you get the message that says, okay, this is not for the world to know about. He will tell you and point you to the right people to talk to about it. Amen. And when the Lord gives you that revelation, keep that secret for God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, when God gives you that kind of revelation, he's not saying that people that fellowship with you are evil. No. It is this spiritual forces that our eyes cannot see that God is trying to wage war spiritually against. Amen. So when you get those kind of messages, it's not like, okay, brother, this in the church must be the devil that wants to kill me. Oh, sister. No, 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 no. They are battle your eyes cannot see. Amen. And God is fighting those war for your sake. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the Lord will keep silence in the season of silence so that the battle that will devour you will be destroyed and then they will now open and break his silence and say, my daughter, my son, this is now for you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In closing, just know that when God Almighty is in the season of silence, learn to understand his ways that you will not make a mistake and dig a pit for yourself. Just be patient and follow the season of silence of God. Amen. Just be patient and hope that he will come for you. Amen. And don't think that, look, there are many more things that will happen to you that God will remain quiet in, uh, for a reason. And it must be one of these three reasons that we have shown today. Now, let me give you an example. When God is in the season of silence and you insist, you, you fall into major trouble. Something bad happens. And you and I have been paying the price. And let's follow three portions of the Bible to give you an example. Verse 3 is just an iceberg. Now, go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Genesis 12, read it loud for me. You see how... God spoke and said, I will do this for you. But God now gave that revelation and God didn't say a word again for several years. And you see when, when you make God look like he doesn't know what he's doing. Because when you can get the glory of God in the season of silence, bad things happen. And that bad thing does not end in one generation. Genesis 12. Peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh huh. Now the Lord said to Abram, 
radical, not all of us, but the radical branch of Muslim today. I want to, I want to be blunt about it. This is Yashu's name. So, because they break that season of silence, we are paying the price. We are. We have suffered the pain. Continue. Go ahead. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to Thank you very much. I want you all to understand. Now, if you continue reading two chapters down, which you can read at your time because I'm in my closing moment. Chapter 18 was when an angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham. And the angel said, okay, the God now has broken his silence. And since God has broken his silence, guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is you're going to have a child. If Sarah started laughing. Even in that verse, uh, chapter eight, uh, chapter 18, Genesis 18, Sarah started laughing. And then the angel asked, are you laughing? Sarah said, no, she lied. I wasn't laughing. Now, that's when God, after many years, God did not say the word. God did not say a word to Abraham again until in chapter 18 where God himself even acknowledged that okay you are old but now is the time you will be given the child that I will have covenant with. Now if you look at it today what is happening between the Christendom and the, and the, uh, and the radical Islam today is what has been prophesied in the Bible. Does it mean there are no good Muslims? Of course there are good people in their midst. Now, why there are bad people in the Christianity? All I want you to understand, to see, where Sarah and Abraham brought conflict and crisis between two brothers. Because they failed to adhere to the season of silence of God. So my brothers and sisters, when God breaks his silence, there are battles that are no longer necessary in your life to fight. Amen. He has already fought the battle for you. Amen. When God breaks that silence, anybody who hurt you 10 years ago, why go back to revenge? Wow. When God breaks that silence to bless you, people who betrayed you, why go back to fight them? Wow. Those battles are no longer necessary. How can I go back and start fighting a battle that God has fought for me? With the hatred in my heart, with the animosity from my heart, it's not necessary. God has clothed me with the clothing of victory. That's why the season of silence of God is important for us to understand God is trying to manifest his will in your life. May God continue to strengthen us all. Amen. May his will always prevail in our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let us rise to pray. Send the light, send the light. Oh, Lord, my God, send the light into our heart. In the name of Yeshua. In the blood of Jesus, send the light, send the light. Oh, yeah, we miss you. Send the light into our heart. God, I beg you to send the light in our heart. Amen. That will enable us to maintain tolerance and endurance. Amen. During your season of silence. So that your will will be fulfilled in our lives. We have lost out so many blessings in our life because we fail to be silent. We have single.